You're watching Suck Professor. Hello, everybody. It's me, Hank. I'm joined by... Me, James. James the Hero, emerging from the swamp in lands where moisture knows no quarter or something. It uh, gets right into the pits. All three of the pits causes problems. So welcome to our Last of Us discussion, everybody. Uh, just a quick note as we uh, enter our podcasting booth. We're using Valheim to produce podcasts now. As we, We've tried this a little bit before, but... Um, back to doing some content and stuff. You're probably surprised to see us on the channel. If you want to see me and James beat up Bone Mass, it's a boss in this game, please uh, join us there. Let me get some some uh, some some uh, heat on the fire there. So we have some light. And uh, we're going to talk about Last of Us. But I want to give you a heads up. We recorded part of this already in the, in the past on March 4th. Uh, we had not seen the final three episodes when we recorded that. So the first chunk you're going to watch us is going to be that. And then you're going to hear us now back in present day, which is, what is this today, James? Monday, the 13th, the day after the finale. So I've been farting around with a new editing program. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. Loving it, but it's a little slower than Premiere for me right now. That's why we're, there's a delay. So since the, the season's over, we're going to do a whole discussion on the uh, season. Um, not, not in super detailed stuff, because we've already done like a half hour... Uh, previous so might be a little bit jumbled but just hang in there and you'll get to enjoy some of that hank and james magic that you all been missing over these last several years and um so great to see everybody check us out uh playing this game if you want to catch up on some of james's heart stories and uh some of my own journey we've all been on um i'm as uh, trying to put some fire in this thing here so check out uh the description for other way ways to support i'm trying to make content again my wrists are fucked up i'm pretty much unemployable for all kinds of reasons and uh, i'm working on content i'm doing woodworking stuff uh patreon thing uh my, my other show winners and losers where i do my my crazed leftist rambling and other things and um so that's kind of it it's, i'm not really going to stick to politics on that anymore i think it's going to be more of a broader th type of thing Nevertheless, um, please check out the description for ways to support if this is something you might be curious about. Um, I'll explain all the re where, where, where everything went wrong and how everything is going to go right. All right, so edit here, enjoy the rest, and then we'll come back and finish our discussion. Okay, James, does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you enjoying the season so far? I mean, I was a big fan of the game, and it's following the game pretty faithfully with the exception of one episode, and it, I think they've done a good enough job with it. Uh, the thing I don't like about it is just how toxic the community is about it, so it's, it's, it's a tough thing to talk about, honestly and constructively, without all of that negativity swirling around and... Yeah, people making you know, people saying I, I didn't really like this episode, and then the automatic assumption that you don't like it because characters are not straight—that kind of thing bothers me a lot. And then saying that you don't really like the character portrayal of Ellie, then all of a sudden it's like, well, you're a pedophile. You don't find her attractive. It, that kind of stuff yeah. is just so toxic and disgusting that it just kind of puts me off talking about it. Right. But if you can put that to the side and just say, okay. Any criticism I have of this is not because I'm a pedophile, not because I'm a bigot. All that kind of just nasty, poisonous thought process, then you can have a good discussion. Yes. Uh, online discourse is um, a minefield of crazy nonsense from all ideologies, not just the, the ones I don't like. Uh, there are definitely yeah, I, um, a lot of bad faith kind of um, – and it, I, I make a lot of space for it only because I, I understand people to be very uh, – um, I don't know how to say it exactly, but like people have people, people approach things in their brains, their brains work differently. I know that because mine does, but like people are all operating with a very different set of, um, what it means to even have a discussion online. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not even talking about what they know about a show or not. I'm just saying like, they're just trying to uh, reaffirm some thing they're insecure about with some stupid comment or they have some sort of troll kind of attitude that's uh, just trying to either trying to twist things around and they know they can manipulate these situations by pretending to be something that they're not and so the, it's all about good faith or bad faith i think it's really healthy yeah. to talk about all the all the aspects you want like a, a healthy conversation about gender and orientation and all that stuff but that's because but on the internet that kind of conversation becomes 
uh, trapped. Oh, there's a wraith we could kill if we want. Um, you want to, let's, let's let's call this wraith over and shoot it in the fucking face before it. But we got to make sure we kill it before it land. Um, you know. So yeah, exactly what you're saying though. It's like it's an interesting. Oh, I shot the dragger. Still, so they'll they'll make it over here. Um, you know, and it is it is unfortunate that it's hard to have those kind of just straight up honest discussions because people people are sort of conditioned to feel sensitive. And I oh, also, I also star dragger by the way. Oh, bitch. that's dangerous. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is a big. That is. And not, my mace is broken, so I can't really do anything to help. Come on. Come on. I mean, I can hit him with a wood cutting axe. It's not... I'm just waiting for my stamina to get up. Yeah, I'll. I, best right. I can do is maybe parry yeah. it. Yeah, get him while get him while he's distracted. He almost killed me there. Here, I'm just gonna roll back. Okay. Hold I'll on, try I and buy now. you some time. Oh! No! <laughs> we uh, both... Right at the same time. <laughs> both bodies. <laughs> That's like God, when two boxers it. knock each other out. <laughs> Um, anyway, all that said, it sucks that the online crap world is such such a rife with that, and uh, yeah. uh, it's all a, it's all a consequence of the uh, fundamental insecurity of modern society. Anyway, so yeah. um, so but that said, though the show is um, performing well, it seems like the audiences are liking it yeah. overall. Yeah, I you know my only criticism of it is you know the character of Ellie played by Bella Ramsey. I think she's doing as good a job as anyone could do given the role. Right. I, I I don't it's not that she doesn't look like the Ellie from the game. I couldn't give two craps about that. That doesn't matter to me. It's just that if you really take a step back and you think about the game, the character of Ellie was voiced by an adult woman playing a child. She oh. had mannerisms and she had a personality that was perhaps a little bit more mature than a child of that age would have. So it doesn't feel weird in the context when you're playing the game because there's this uncanny thing about a Here. CGI character. Come up to the podcast studio. Keep going. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, behaving in a way that's not realistic or doesn't gel with reality. So you don't tend to question it. It doesn't really feel weird or uncomfortable because it has that weird, surreal quality to it where you have the suspension of disbelief because you know you're playing a game and you know this isn't reality. Yeah. But then for some reason, and I can't quite put my finger on it, when you have a live-action human being try to embody that same role, I find myself cringing a little bit like, ooh, that doesn't really hit the way that it hit in the game or – that this feels uncomfortable. It feels forced. It feels odd. Yeah. And it's not a criticism of Bella Ramsey. It's a criticism of that role being brought into real life. Yeah. Yeah. My, you try. Yeah. Well, you try and explain that, and it's like, well, you're just not sexually attracted to her the way you were the character in the game. And, and when I hear that, I, not no one's ever said that to me, but I see other people saying that to other people making the same argument. I just want to go and vomit in the sink. Well, is that because you're sexually attra attracted to sinks? Yes, yes. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's just like you cuck. To, to, to take something that's a, a legitimate criticism and to take it to that disgusting extreme right off the bat is just so unpalatable and so off-putting that it just makes me want to say, you know what, I'm not talking about this anymore. Yeah, of course. That is uh, that's the exact uh, problem. Is the the, the fart po the poison farts that the uh, bad faith people on the internet offer up? Uh, but makes, there's so many of them. Yeah, it's, it's just ugh. it goes. It's it's yeah. It's relentless. That's that's part of the mental infrastructure that's collapsing within societies because no no animals ever done this kind of thing to a planet before. With the I, I think it's the phones. I think it's the information availability slash the way we receive the information and the profit motives of those who are in control of information pipelines. So we have years of bad education, years of all, so there's all sorts of reasons why we can't just talk to each other like human beings because we're trying to score points because of the way we internalize the different cultural battles that are all happening. And there's also legitimate threats towards people who are of marginalized disposition. Oh God, fuck. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I'm naked. Baby. Get in the portal. Okay. Block I'm running away though. <laughs> no, in, in, the, in the portal is where he should probably go. No, I want his chains. I'm going to get dressed and, and shoot him. <laughs> that was so funny. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. That's why I didn't want to. I don't have a weapon. I got, I got it. I got it. I got, I got, I didn't even, I didn't even have my HUD activated. I'm filming a TV torch. show. <laughs> I 
have nothing. Where's my arrows? Why is he <laughs> shooting? Why is he? Oh, it's my ninja. All right, come towards me. Come towards me. I shot him. I shot him. This is what killed me last time. That was so Oh, I'm going to die again. I don't want to die. I got him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my skills are already taking a huge hit. Oh, that was great. Did we get his cloak? Did we get the trophy? I, that's the coolest one because it's like a... No, I had it in the last game. It was like one of the first ones I got. I got it really early. I need the chain here. Dude, James, I had the angle on that. I was in the... um, Yeah, I... I the shot of that was perfect. That was like we had planned that. What the fuck? I can't... Uh... Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, no. I, so I had the camera sitting, like, basically looking at your left shoulder. So it came up as a total surprise to me because it was most of it was blocked. If I was headed in a straight-on shot, I, I would have seen it way earlier. Yeah. That was so I funny. I close the door. Not that that's going to help. All right. You, uh, we can resume our conversation. This is the kind of podcasting I was kind of hoping to do on Suck Professor is where we sit here and we talk about something so we're not being distracted by the game. And then every once in a while, we get attacked by some crazy animal that we have to fight off. Because this can also spawn trolls. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, let's get back to the conversation. This is the this is the uh, McLaughlin group, 1989. Welcome. We just got attacked by a wraith. We're back! Wrong! The, the kids love McLaughlin group references. Um, James was saying, or I was saying, that it sucks the discourse online. and <laughs> the, the very weird people. Um, I What you were saying about... Um, Bella Ramsey, though, is that character, I just, my only issue with it is that I think the casting could have maybe wasn't great. She's such a good actor in uh, yeah. Game of Thrones. She has a very she, commanding yeah, presence, she, and she's a perfect she, casting for her role in Game of Thrones. It. So it's Absolutely. awesome to see her career. Like, she's one of those young actors where you're like, wow, that's that's obviously someone we're going to see more of. She's, she's clearly got some gravitas. I don't think it's great casting, but it's more not her. It's more the writing just doesn't quite. What because it, it seems like an like an inherent challenge to go from video game to screen, especially and I didn't realize that she was voiced by an adult, which changes things a little bit, obviously. And how old? I mean, she must be a teen. I mean, she's not like a she's not like ten. She's, uh, she's she's playing, I think, fourteen, but she's actually nineteen. Oh, she's nineteen. Yeah, so she's uh, you know, and that's fine. I mean, she she can play nineteen until she's forty, probably. Um, I think I just found the writing kind of cumbersome. It, it's gotten better, though. It, it's sort of the banter between her and Joel and it, I find, um, is uh, not as a not in a film sort of uh, a long form dramatic television show compared to a video game. It's more like video game drama or video game joking and acting banter doesn't quite translate exactly well. But they the writers have this responsibility and it's obvious that they're very much conscientious of paying um honor and homage to the game like there's they're doing shots from the game cut scenes and they're definitely dedicated to like trying to deliver a a, a world that, it, that that the game players will find familiar even though they all always know that there's going to be some game some of the game diehards that are going to be upset about every little detail so yeah. they're they're hitting the right spot in that sense but it's also a very big thing to live up to and i'm not trying to like shit on her or anything i think it's fine and it's getting better as the season's going along i think too as the drama is ramping up um but I, I, I usually forget half the shit I, I, I see when I see any show anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm talk. not going to give any spoilers or anything for those who haven't played the game. But I, I genuinely, my biggest issue is I do not at all see how Bella Ramsey, as the, the, the person who's fulfilling the role of Ellie, how that will make sense if the game, I'm sorry, if, if the show follows the same exact foothold as the game going into the sequel. Right. That concerns me a lot. She's doing as good a job as anyone could do as Ellie currently, but unless they fundamentally change the story, I just don't see it working. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. I, uh, I'm doing emotes here. I'm seeing how I'm seeing how well it works. Oh, he doesn't do it while he's sitting. This is, this is fake. Uh, yeah, so are you... So they're doing more seasons, though. They're going to be jumping into other seasons really quickly. Yeah, I, I believe I did hear that it got greenlit for season two. And my initial thought before the show, you know, got its it started running was like, okay, well, season two cannot be the second game because it's it's like a time jump, and then there's very serious drama stuff, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy stuff going on in the second game. Mm -hmm. So in the first game, I was like, well, clearly they're going to want to stretch the first game out to like maybe two or three seasons, but. The way it's progressing, no, it's we're right at the end of the game. 
Well, as we all know, uh, 20 plus years into the uh, fungus apocalypse, the uh, road infrastructure stays pretty good. So you can you can get from yeah. Boston to Kansas in like, a, I don't know, like a commercial break. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> They're doing some time traveling, I think. It they they could have stretched it out. Yeah, really. Like, that's what I wish they had done, though. Like, it, like why not build out? the journey from Boston to this Boston suburbs. You know what I mean? Like, like obviously you can't do the entire trip across, yeah. but like there's so much extra room when you actually sort of, if you landing it with, since it's not a video game, it's live action. Now it's existing in our reality. Human. We, we all know America has got a you know, big country, any country, not just America here, but it, it, that gives them the f kind of the window or the invitation to say, we can add some stuff and really make it a two or three season to get through the first game. Um, you know, like they got to that whole like uh, gang of uh, run by the middle, the, uh, the the mean lady, the Karen. <laughs> I don't like using that word, yeah. actually. But uh, that 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 tribe of cult, whatever killers. And they're just there all of a sudden. And um, yeah. So, yeah. I I, yeah. And, and the thing that I think some people don't take into consideration, because I see a lot of people on forums dripping with vitriol and hatred for game players because they're always criticizing well hey, only this episode i love this episode I only got a negative review because the gamers are, are diluting it the, the thing that, that that anyone in that mindset needs to understand is that you have a fundamentally different experience with a product from playing a game as you do from watching it on screen because you have seen these characters and you've lived with these characters and you've grown with these characters over the span of five hours. Someone who's played a game has spent 40, 50, 60, 70 hours with these characters listening to dialogue constantly, listening to banter that is not in the show, playing as them, interacting as them, trying to keep them alive, suffering through the failures and reveling with the victories you build a much deeper appreciation and a much deeper connection with these characters and the way that they progress and grow with each other than you could ever possibly get through the medium of five, six, seven, eight episodes on HBO. So to try and build an understanding of how far these characters have come together in a game is a doable feat. To try and do the same thing through a limited number of episodes with time jumps that go three months into the future is a much more curriculum feat. It, it's... It is not the same. You right. So when people who play the game might be a little bit more critical of how the show is handling something, you have to understand that they feel a probably a lot deeper connection to the characters than you do as, as a viewer. And that's not saying that your experience is lesser than theirs or that their experience is better than yours. It's just different. Of course. Well, I mean, that's the fundamental disconnect is that people don't know how to uh, contextualize their own experience as being um, – worthy of respect but also that other people's experiences are also just the same yeah. you know that it's yeah if you're going into problem. it saying that the show is a superior way to experience this or the game is a superior way to experience this then you're setting yourself up for for a vast gulf of disagreement between the two parties is that's that not a healthy way to look at it correct yep but and, you know what? I will say, yeah the show did certain things that far better than the game could have done and the game did certain things that i think were better than the show could have done it's you know there's give and take on both sides but don't attack a person for being a gamer and don't attack a person for being a show viewer only mm -hmm. it says you know we're part of the same community we should either like it or hate it together or just be be okay with the disagreements too that's also something yeah, people could be better just, about but, but, but this yeah. is not an us versus them team thing we're all fans of the content and we need to realize this. This isn't politics. Well, not yes. that politics should be that way either, but it, right, you know, right, it right. just is. Well, the thing is, they've made politics everything. So the cult, that's yeah. partially the goal of the culture war. You've heard it in the uh, tea drinking, latte sipping, Volvo driving, blue haired, nose pierced. It's like all that stuff is like absolutely nothing to do with the power structures. It's, it's all designed intentionally to keep people distracted with stuff that they can fight about. And, but then they inject it into more and more of regular life. It used to be like it didn't matter what kind of car you drove. It didn't matter all the stupid shit. Not that it was always great in this country. Don't get me wrong. But the uh, project of politicizing consumption is what that is. Is because then you could – because if you politicize consumption, you politicize every single thing we do because we are defined as workers or consumers. We don't get to be anything other than one of those. As soon as you're done working, you become a consumer. 
because they also need you to buy their shit until they figure out how they can give robots money to be part of the economy because <laughs> they're just trying to get rid of as many workers as they can because human beings are expensive um, and they can complain. And uh, so <clears throat> the po politicization of all of society, of what food you eat, what cheese you eat, what you do for fun on the weekends, what you – boaters are a different breed of people than these other kind of – you know, like – it just creates division based on regular behavior. And that's on purpose because they don't want anybody to turn their head up and say, oh, I see what's going on up top. That's where the actual sources of the problem, problem are. Actually, I'm just going to sit around and get mad about trans people or immigrants or something like that. Uh, and, and, and it doesn't mean that those people don't deserve defending either. I'm not saying that that's a mistake. It's just that now we, we get mired in this stuff. Because it prevents actual economic progress. That's the primary reason of all of it. And so what is the result of that is that people like you and me, consumers, I'm not saying I'm immune from it. We're, we're, we're content consumers and entertainment. You get stuck having to deal with all this nonsense online in that way that you're talking. Like it's annoying. I like to speak. I love the nuance of everything. To me, it's all very kind of interesting and fascinating to observe. And, and it sucks that it has such a harmful effect on people. Um, but the ultimate goal of it all is just to prevent prevent anybody from actually identifying the actual problems, um, which is, uh, the, you know, the way power is, is distributed. Uh, so, you know, yeah, that's that's right. Hank, Hank made a good point. <laughs> um, did you? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything else you want to say about that show, though? I mean, you, we don't have any like other, I, I might make a separate video out of this just for our, our talk about that. Uh. I mean, not really. I, I, I'm looking forward to the next episode this Sunday because I think it's going to really introduce the character, in, if it follows the game at least, without you know giving anything away. But it's going to put uh, a character in a position that's going to require an immense push and show of acting ability. And I think she can do it. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing her knock it out of the park. But it's it's a very it's it's a I don't I don't know how to say it without doing too much, but it's 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 a very emotionally charged moment in the game that is pivotal for the character development. I see. Yeah, I played the game completely. It's on Suck Professor, and I didn't. Um, I have no memory. <laughs> I remember the knife in the window. And like the the blowing, the blowing um, curtain. Oh yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whole, so probably shouldn't do a video. It should do a TV show or a show commentary channel where I can't remember. It. <laughs> yeah, they paid homage to the whole iconography of the open window in episode three. Yeah. Oh, the 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 did you pick up the giraffe homage? Did they do that? Yep. I was very disappointed, to be honest. It was very quick. I only saw it because I saw something on Twitter. They showed a giraffe stuffed animal like in the dirt. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw that, but yeah. that's just... But that's it. Oh, yeah, you're right. We're already past that point in the game. So yeah. I guess they show. Oh, that was one of the best parts of the game, too, because in the game, it was right after I think Ellie had to, you know, kill a human. And she was still kind of psychologically traumatized by that. And she was very reserved. She wasn't talking. She was shut down. And then all of a sudden, the light in her reinvigorates. And she's like, Joel, Joel, come along. And, and Joel doesn't know what she sees. And then they kind of reconnect and bond again over the giraffes. I thought that was an incredibly important scene. So Yeah, I do know, remember little... that. Yeah, that, that scene was so important, it actually is in my head. I still remember that one because it's like a yeah. great, beautiful scene. I mean, well, logistically, how do you do it? I mean, you find real giraffes that you can direct. You can't really direct a giraffe. And if you do a CGI giraffe, it's probably going to look like crap. So I get it. Uh, one word, dumbass. Um, fuck. I can't. Um, Ang Lee. Like, yeah. Which, or, uh, they can use a football mascot and do force perspective to make him look like Jeffrey from Toys R Us. <laughs> oh. oh. I was picturing Toy Story. I was like, I don't know of any Jeffrey from Toy Story. Jeffrey from Toys R Us is the mascot. Yeah, no, the word I'm thinking of, dumbass, is uh, the guy in the boat with the tiger. That movie. Tiger the Boat Life Boy. Huh? Life of Pi? Is that what that's called? I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that the CGI tiger is pretty good is all I mean. Is like They could have done a draft if they really had, if they really wanted to. Or even just like you a know, painting. It doesn't even have to be like a like a couple guys with a matte painting run by. 
Um, it's actually it's surprising though because I've seen other shows that are like really, really, really high budget. Yeah, DC CGI Legends of Tomorrow so poorly that it just blows your mind that that they were okay with that. So it's, I I always look at CGI as hit or miss. It's always a risk. Yeah, it can be done phenomenally well, or but if you do it really well but not great, it's still bad. If you know what I mean. Yes. Um... I watched that uh, Corridor Crew on YouTube, VFX Artists react, react, and uh, guys are a little too chipper for my taste, but I like that they get into the history of stuff. They do, they do a good job breaking stuff down, so you learn a lot. And uh, they showed how they did the – like one of the coolest things about movies is where there's CGI that you didn't know of. You know, Often yeah. it's like a static object, like a building or – you know, that's a lot of CGI that we never see because faces and animals are a lot easier for us to pick up on. But they talked about yeah. the um, – uh, uh, social uh, network with the two twin guys played by Army Hammer, one actor, uh -huh. and I didn't realize how they made that. I mean, that was that was like that was all pure CGI recreation, and but they made Army, but they didn't really do that. They filmed Army Hammer in this like ball camera thing that had all these different lights around, so like, like a circle, like his head was inside a giant beach ball of lights. And then they had all the lights change. So because the, the big, from watching that show and doing some of my own stuff, nowhere near any kind of real VFX. But like they the lighting is always the most critical part, the reference lighting, because that's what makes things jump out is when something just is colored a little bit differently in terms of like the black and white levels. And then also like the, the, the camera and the angles of the shadows. So they have to get that perfect. And they filmed the guy in this ball thing. just to, So then they scanned all these faces for each image. But they use these cameras. But in order to make it work for the movie, they had to know the exact lighting rig in the set, and then the ball thing would match the lighting as the as the actor moved around inside the set. So there, wow. so you have to have this sort of like duplicate lighting that has to be perfect or probably pretty close to perfect. Really cool. Like the the technology that they put into uh, movies and stuff is uh, really underappreciated. I, sh I should watch more behind the scenes stuff because there's a lot of amazing innovation uh and inventive kind of spirit in filmmaking um so i don't th but even today though we still struggle to do faces because human there's the, the, the human that the one thing human beings can do better than anything else is recognize faces so it's extremely difficult to to do a pure cgi characters like they like to do like that that channel will do like the you know luke skywalker uh, appearance in uh whatchamacallit, you know, like the different Star Wars characters have come up. Princess Leia looked horrible, looked like some chimpanzees, yeah. goofy, goofy ant or, or mated with a human or something. Um, but there are some in some movies, like they'll, like there are uh, a couple of that channel, I keep referencing, but like where they're like, wow, I couldn't even tell. And if those dudes can't tell, then it's a pretty good job. Um, so the technology is there, but it's, it still is. It's just still sort of like out of reach. Like it's, you, you can get really close, but... That uncanny valley is a big ass valley. Yeah, Go and that's kind of why if you're gonna do CGI, you have to nail it perfectly, or else it's gonna be a, a laughing point of the show. Right, and it's, it's sort of like so. I'm an editor, right? But like my goal when I edit something is that you don't notice it was edited. The whole point of it is that it, it the, the the flow of the narrative or whatever is gone is is uh, is is primary, and I don't want someone to notice the editing. Unless they stop and go, wow, that is good editing. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. the CGI, the same thing with CGI. So they could have done a giraffe. It'd be funny if you find out that the stuffed toy was a was a CGI stuffed toy, <laughs> yeah. like smushed into the dirt. But it's also like, the, uh, just Pedro do a little Pascal more than that. It's, it, oh, sorry, I totally interrupted you there. Go ahead. Oh, that, that Pedro Pascal does not exist in reality. He's a CGI construct. Yeah. The Mandalorian is, is uh, they have to like take that off his helmet. He's, he's wearing, yeah. what, what, what the hell am I trying to say? Um, Andor was amazing. That's something we should do at one of these talks on. But uh, yeah, so real quick, James, we're going to say goodbye for this, right? I think we, I think we've done a nice video here. You and I could keep playing the game, I think, but we'll we'll call it quits for the recording and all that. Um, but this was fun. I'm, what I'm going to do is make this Last of Us sort of a, se a separate video because you think you had some great commentary. We're developing our little podcasting Valheim Studio stuff. I might have different buildings in different locations. That'll give me something to work on. And um, but we'll talk about Andor. There's a lot of other stuff. Uh, James, I'm going to ask the audience to maybe leave a comment about shows that you'd like to hear us talk about. We'll, we'll be glad to do that. I know they have a few people that were, were pretty pretty down for us. They forced us to do a Patreon, which is one of the most flattering things that's ever gone on. So that would be cool. And maybe we can follow up on some, with some with some requests like that about what shows that would be would be fun to talk about. But um, any other... 
like Dr. Phil. Yeah. Season two through nine was like it's it's prime era. And then the writers yeah. changed and you could just tell they're just kind of going for clicks. Like when, yeah. he, when he kept just saying booyah and stuff. Yeah. And when they recast Dr. Phil in season four and thought we wouldn't notice. Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knew that was Viv. Come on. <laughs> Is that the right name? Did I get it right? <laughs> you did. Yes, that was Press Prince, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first Viv went and and and, and became Doctor Doctor Phil. Yeah, <laughs> or or like uh, what was it? I not not I Dream of Genie, but Bewitched. They changed Darren halfway through. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, just to to up the ante on the age of the reference. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there was a there was a Fresh Prince episode where they get lost in the woods or something, and they're living in a cave, and they're burning. They yeah. had a bag of money and they burn said, money. We're yeah, have to burn that's the money. Right. To stay alive. And it's like, there's branches. It's like, go burn the branches. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, not a fan of money. My, yeah. Yeah. You'd have like a serious episode I know. Of, of any show. Like I remember one episode of Family Matters. Carl comes home and there's no laugh track. There's no music. And he's just deadpan. And he's like, honey, I shot a kid. I was like, oh, I want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not. I'm eating my cereal. I'm ready for Steve Urkel to come through and say, "Got any cheese?" Yeah. and then he does that. Did I shoot that? Yeah, yeah and then there was an, a Fresh Prince episode where Carlton and Will encounter someone, and Carl, Will protects Carlton and gets shot. It's like, okay, wow, yeah. The S- Save by the Bell would do drug episodes though too. They did one where they got they they went to a prom or, or they they were all drinking and driving as teenagers. Sometimes do don't yeah. do that, kids. And uh, but then they had to get all serious about it, and they have other ones too. Yeah, uh, Jesse did speed and was auditioning for something. And yeah, she was like, I'm so excited. I'm right. so scared. Because you don't want you don't want toxic chemicals in your body because it's dangerous unless they're it's just in the air because we have to poison ourselves in order to for the society to work. Um, mm-hmm. I've been watching a lot of stuff about plastics and 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 like lead and stuff. It's a uh, some more news is a good channel on YouTube that was talking about that in a video the other day. Um. Or even more news or whatever they get a pie. Whatever. Okay. Okay, James. Everybody, welcome back to Suck Professor. Hopefully we can come back with some more stuff. These are fun. I just like talking with my friend James. We have a nice uh, – I hope we have, we can get back into a rhythm maybe. I don't know how consistent we can get, but we'll see. James, did you have a, did you enjoy this? this I always feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of asking a lot of you when I make you do these kinds of things. Oh, asking me to play a game that I love and talk about things that I enjoy? How dare you? With a man that you love? Yeah, sure. Tell me you love me. Sure, Tell yes. Tell me you love me, motherfucker. No, okay, I get it. I know. I, I understand. <laughs> when I made uh, I made this um, uh, thing for the Young Turks, I, I edited this huge uh, special for Thanksgiving in 2019. I worked really hard on it. It was an amazing, like, I, I was uh, amazing. That's not the right word. It was a huge project, p- fucking horribly produced, but I had this giant pile of uh, footage, and I, had, I made this, like, kind of st- storyline of, other people like giving interviews and stuff. So it's I actually, it, I think it was quite well done, but I included in it this whole plot where I tried to force Dave Kohler to say he loves me. And it was very similar to you because both of, uh, because he's disconnected from his feelings and that's always hilarious. Oh, we got a race. We got to go shoot a fucking, let's go kill him. I'm going to kill him. I still, I still have no weapons and 25 health. Oh, well eat some food. He's fighting a, a brute. I'm putting on my clothes first. <laughs> Hold on. Do you need do you need um, arrows? Uh, I, I think I've yeah I've got some. Wood I just arrows. I just dropped a bunch in front of you. All right, we're gonna kill this guy. And we're gonna say goodbye. Hopefully we get a hopefully we get one of his clothes or his, his hoodie. Come on, come on. I see a chain on the ground. Yeah, we got a chain. All right, that's that. Oh, well. I'm really wondering if we can get or hoping to find out that we can get a ghost trophy from those from the dungeons. That's gonna be fun. That would mm. be cool. Yep, so, um, all right, bye, James. I love you. Yes. And, okay, wasn't that fun? Those two guys are really interesting to listen to, weren't they? So, James, Last of Us finale was last night. We've, uh, right. we've, we've actually seen the entire season now. You and I both played through the game on our on Sock Professor right here, so people can find that in the description. But um, you're a huge fan, as they know. Um, how did you feel? Oh. How, how was the finale? How was the entire season? I'll just let you decide how you want to answer. Go ahead. Uh, it, it's a difficult thing to talk about because I am a huge fan of the game. 
And I understand that there's people who are fans of the game who are completely opposed to the TV show and people who are, love the TV show who absolutely hate gamers and hate the opinion that people have of the game. And my, the, I'll start with the good. The good is that the game and the show predominantly follow the same journey. There are things that are just ridiculously accurate shot-by-shot -shot depictions from the game right in the show. And as a game lover, you can't really ask for anything more than that. And I think that the, the, the performances were as good as anyone could possibly have done. It took me a little bit of time to get used to the, the Ellie of the show. She didn't really gel with me first. But over time, she kind of showed that she could, she had the acting chops to do it. And over time, you end up accepting it. So having said all that, though, I think I have to fall back on what I originally said, which is if I had to describe the entire season or the entire narrative up until this point, the only word I could use is rushed. It, it progressed so quickly that I did not buy the relationship between Ellie and Joel. I did not see the character progression. I didn't see the character arc that would lead them to be diametrically opposed to each other, to being basically emotionally attached to one another. There is something inherent about playing the game where you spend dozens and dozens and dozens of hours with these two characters. You embody these characters. You play as these characters. Mm -hmm. You struggle and fail and succeed with these characters. You see them win. You see them die. You spend enormous amounts of time listening to them banter back and forth to each other. And it's in those little inconsequential moments that the show didn't bother to capture that you really see who these characters truly are. And by the time you get to the very end of the show or the very end of the game, that final pivotal moment really felt, and it, it, you know, to be full transparency, it was not a choice you could make. The game forces you to do what you have to do. But as a player, you don't know that initially. You go into that room and you feel as if you have a choice as, as to whether the, to do it or not to the, do it. The doctor scene you're, you're talking about. Spo yes, spoilers, yes. everybody, obviously, in case it's not been clear. But yeah, Do the doctor scene yeah. at the end. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Right. So, so when you do it, it's almost as though you are embodying the mind of Joel and you feel personally responsible for what you've done because that is a decision. Your finger literally pulls the trigger on that event. And it feels personal and you feel guilty and you feel conflicted and you have all sorts of emotions. That game just devastated me when I first played it. it I, I was thinking about it for days, weeks, months, years. I still think about it today, and it's been over 10 years. Did you cry? It was... No, no, but uh, it, you know, it, 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 it was a, a powerful game. It was a powerful personal experience. And when you sit back and you simply watched what is, in large part, a very condensed version of that that takes place over the span of eight hours... Uh, I really should say seven hours because there was one episode you barely saw the, the story just stagnated. It didn't progress at all. They went off on a different tangent, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. But in the span of seven hours, it just it doesn't feel like it's earned. It doesn't feel like it works. And when you watch the very ending of it, you don't have any emotional connection to it because you're not the one doing it. You're just watching someone else make that choice. So I, I think the story was really driven by the whole interactive capacity of it. And maybe if you haven't played the game, she wouldn't agree. And you would say, I was emotional during it. I got something out of it. But it just, the show pales in comparison to the roller coaster emotions I felt when I went through it myself as Ellie and as Joel. Right. Okay. So that's an inherent conflict or inherent challenge of convert of, uh, converting what's the, adapting a video game into a, a show into a professional like top shelf kind of production like this premium tv um has there ever been a show that's done it a video game uh to to show uh conversion well like better than this because I, I like like you said they, they actually seem like they went out of their way to recreate well, some of the shots and they, they seem to have kind of honored mo more than they needed to at least in terms of what the low standard is as far as the, like the way hollywood takes liberties with things 
some of which is completely understandable in terms of because it's a, just a different format. There's like what is the what is the average playthrough time of Last of Us? Sixty hours or something? I don't know what it is. Is yeah, it like something like that? You can't yeah. you, you can't make a sixty episode season, although you, you certainly could stretch yeah. it out if you wanted to. But um, you know what I'm saying though? Is it like it, it, given all given the nature of the the challenge? I still think they deserve credit for uh, oh, honoring the video yeah. game as much as they did, despite oh, the yeah, things that, that... you mentioned. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say in the beginning, is that I don't think it could have been done much better in the sense of converting it from the game into the the show. But I just don't think a television series was the right medium for it. It just, you lose so much. It's like taking a, you know, like a, a 10 megapixel picture and then converting it into an, a cake icing picture. It's like, yeah, you did a the best job you could have done converting it into an icing drawing, but it's still not going to look as sharp and clear as the, the 10 megapixel image. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't expect you to pull up, pull a cake icing reference uh, today. Well, you know me, I'm a big baker. <laughs> you know that <laughs> I mean, my mom had that done. Like when it first came out 20 years ago or whatever, she was so impressed that they had that, had that done on a cake for like someone's graduation. I remember that just, sorry, just flashback flashing back. Yes. Cake icing photos are much less realistic. Also that may, they make terrible flip books. <laughs> really, di really difficult flip books uh, uh, for that. So um, I didn't listen to you because you said cake icing. So you keep talking. Okay. Well, no, I mean, I, I think all I can really say is that they did a great job with it. Yeah. But I don't think that, at least for me and for probably a lot of other people who played the game first, you're always kind of chasing that same feeling that you had the first time you experienced it. And you're never going to get that again. Uh, and you're especially not going to get it watching somebody else go through the motions of a story that you have no control over. So it's almost as though, you know, I, I did right. feel kind of empty and hollow when it happened because I was waiting for this moment. I was waiting to feel that same feeling I felt 10 years ago when it happened to me in the video game. And it just happened so quickly and so abruptly. And, and I'm looking at it, and I'm impressed, too, because it's like, this is shot for shot for shot for shot. This is beautifully done as a recreation of the game, but I just didn't feel anything. Right. Okay. Fair. You know, I mean, your, your initial exposure was uh, through actual controlling the narrative and the pace and all that. Um, but watching a TV show is a lot like being in one of those, like, little toy cars that they make children drive at the grocery store they think they're steering but they're really not you know like you're on rails oh, yeah. like you don't have you're not actually calling the shots and that's just that's just the nature of it um so what do you think though not that it's easy to put your, your head in the mind of other people but someone who hadn't played the video game i imagine this is probably a pretty compelling story uh i think they still captured the intensity of joel's relationship with uh ellie uh especially as the show progresses because joel is sort of a reluctant hero his motivations change as, he's, as the show goes on. Um, they also filled out his backstory more, right? Isn't that something else that they didn't do, that they yeah. added? Yeah, they added yeah. in Ellie's backstory with Ellie's mom, who was played by uh, Ashley, I forget her last Johnson? name. But the, the, uh, Ashley Johnson, I think that's right. Yeah, who was the person who portrayed uh, Ellie as a voice actor in the first and second game. Uh, yeah. And Joel Scott, Joel uh, missed him. He was the guy who tried to shoot himself. You know, yeah, yeah, the, the whole yeah. suicide, the attempted suicide Pretty thing. Right. If if that was in the games, I have no memory of it whatsoever. That that did not resonate with me at all. But it looks like they tried to flesh him out a little bit more than he may have been in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't think it really hurt the story. I don't think it added a whole lot to it. But it, you know, it was a creative choice they made. And, you know, yeah. kudos to them for attempting it. Well, you know. TV writers have different incentives. You know, they, they're trying to condense things into a shorter uh, time frame, and that kind of backstory yeah. is a pretty, pretty intense. Uh, you know, high caliber to use a word that's maybe an opportune uh, way of uh, of inject ingesting a, injecting a lot of uh, heaviness into the uh, into the thing. Um, yeah. One yeah. thing I can say though is. I think it's, you know, without giving away any spoilers of what's yet to come, I do think that the way they told the story this season is undeniable proof that the second season is going to follow the major events of the second game, whether people want to see that or not. And I think it's the, the time that they spent zoomed in on the, the head surgeon that Joel killed. And the very fact, now this is something the show probably did a little bit better that the game didn't 
real that they kind of I don't know the best way to describe this. The game, due to its length, tends to make you forget the atrocities that Joel has committed. Yes, Joel tortures people to get information and kills them and shoots people without hesitation, even as they beg for their lives. But it happens so infrequently in the gameplay that you're enduring. And you kill so many people playing the game that you don't really embody those murders and that torture as something really significant. But in the movie or the, the TV show, it happens so quickly and the pace is so fast and everything is so condensed that you can't help but remember Joel stabbing the man in the knee and, and threatening to pop his kneecap off and then killing him anyway after he already gives him the information. Yeah. Or or doing what he did to Marlene with the line, you'll just come after her anyway. Who's Marlene? Joel the does, lady in the parking garage at the end? The, the, the head firefly, yes. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, Ellie's adoptive, quote-unquote, mother. Okay. So so it kind of paints a picture as Joel being far more, more vicious and brutal than you might realize he actually was in the game. Because he was in the game, but it wasn't as readily apparent because you're basically a Rambo the entire game killing hundreds of people. The, the show is not like that. They take that video game element out and makes you realize the humanity in what he's doing. So in that way, I think the show did a better job, but it hurts to say that because I know that they want the audience to be conflicted about whether Joel is the good guy or the bad guy. They want you to see him as a violent guy who was committed horrible acts because they need you to feel that way for, for what's yet to come or what he's yet to do. There's a Star Trek Voyager episode, which I'm sure you didn't expect me to say, uh, about a guy who... Um has murderous instincts and he kills somebody and then it deals with his like impulses to kill and how he has to satisfy that. And then later on, he, uh, in a later episode, he, he returns. He's actually played by the dude who, um, the famous guy, he's, uh, he's worm tongue from, uh, Lord of the Rings. Great actor. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really interesting arc in Star Trek Voyager. Really great actor though. He's got freaky eyes. He's just like an intense guy. And, um, perfectly cast and so but then he has to kill again to rescue so they they imprison him in his quarters because they're like we're not going to keep him in the brig for 70 years we're just going to keep him in his quarters anyway in another episode he has to come back and he starts killing again i think joel i think what they're doing with joel being like a reformed bad guy because they kind of re reference to him um doing uh you know being a murderer before they sort of made a fuss about that near the beginning of the season and then he's like now he's looking after people he seems to have reformed himself but, um, you know, shifting over to the good light part of society, not the bad guy part of society. And then he's forced to sort of return to those roots, that sort of murderous impulse. Or he, he indulges it again, not that he's enjoying it, but he's willing to sacrifice his humanity once more and, and undo the, the whatever gains he's made in terms of his own reconciling with his ability to do that kind of killing. Um you know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the, I think they were setting up that arc to show that he's that he 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 uh, sacrificed him, his own self in to, in order to protect Ellie because he took on this kind of uh, quest, kind of uh, protector role over her, and it required that he do these like really terrible things. Um, but like the the whole popping the kneecap uh, bit, <laughs> I found that strange because he had just jammed a knife like seven inches down a guy's lower leg, as if the kneecap is now the issue. Like you've got a knife penetrating through your all your, like you've already like, Oh no, not my kneecap. Like you've got a giant blade sticking from the top of your knee into your shin. I think, I don't know. I just found that funny to be like, Oh, don't be careful. Like I've, I've already poked out both your eyes, but I'm going to squeeze your ear, ear real hard. Like, like, yeah, you don't want to lose your kneecap, but that leg is gone. <laughs> Especially with the lack of like emergency healthcare that would have been available at that time. Um, I don't know. I just thought, I remember thinking that at the time. And, uh, so any thoughts about that, James? Uh, no, I mean, I, I just, he could have just been saying that as an intimidation tactic. Cause when you've got a knife stuck in your leg, you're not really operating yeah. at a high level of thought. Of course. Yeah. So for, 
threat of further injury is probably a motivating enough factor at that point. But yeah, you're right. He's going to get infected. He's going to bleed out. He's never going to walk right. He's not right. going to be rehabilitated. You don't have modern medicine in yeah. the post-apocalyptic world. You hold the knife over the kneecap, maybe cut the skin a little bit and threaten to like smash that with a log because that's like a way you use knives to like cut is you hit the back of the knife. That's a threat to pop off your kneecap. Stabbing the guy through the entire leg. Okay, now we're getting a little bit much, but it's very minor detail. Did not spoil my enjoyment of the show. Um, yeah, so th in terms of the Joel character, though, do you feel Pedro Pascal did a, a good job? I think I think he was yeah. uh, excellent. He, yeah, that guy's I, nailing it. What a career he's having these last several years, huh? Yeah, I mean, th there are certain scenes that people have put on YouTube that shows the delivery of, of lines between Pedro and uh, Troy Baker. And, you know, if I had to pick in any given scene who did it better... I'm kind of always leaning towards Troy Baker, but in terms of a real life flesh and blood human being that could have done the role, I think Pedro Pascal knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah. Perfect hair. What a hunky guy, huh? Oh, that, that just like disheveled. I don't give a shit about my hair. I love that. Love that. That's how you know they're really in the, the apocalypse. Just look, just really, really hit the mark. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Did they? You never. Go ahead. You never really see him shave or cut his hair, though. And it's been months and months and months and months and months of a time span. Well, yes, so. I think that's like um, that's just classic Hollywood. If they had to actually replicate proper five o'clock shadow and then like day after, you know, like that's not possible. <laughs> you just got to shave. Never, I never saw him cut his fingernails. I am completely yeah. unimmersed. Yeah. Well, it would have been a much longer show if they showed him having a spa day. Because the, there was yeah. all the, the network of spas were all still operating. Um, there was Yoshinoya had turned in from sushi into uh, spas. I don't know why I went with that reference. We're sponsored by Yoshinoya, everybody. Yoshinoya.com slash winners and losers slash James. Um, weird aside. Okay. Sorry, my brain is I even, farting. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a sushi restaurant. It's a fast, oh, okay. casual sushi restaurant that dessert, that offers delightful lunch treats. Uh, you, you jerk. <laughs> Um, seafood is not for me. <laughs> James calls sushi seafood. Isn't that well, adorable? It's made of fish, right? It's made it's of fish. rice. It's made of rice and soy sauce, okay? That's the okay. kind I can afford. Um, no, I can't. Um, right, so the show was... Uh, I had a question. Um, here's a question I wrote down. What did uh, they get wrong, or did they leave anything out from the game that you felt like might have been included? Now, I was really happy to see that they did do the giraffe scene, and they did it very well, almost shot for shot for the you know how yep. it played out. Well, I guess I'll I'll leave. in the video game the giraffe scene was a little bit better because I remember standing at that balcony and just drinking in the view, and I sat there for probably like fifteen minutes just you know enjoying the time. And then I, you know, the logical part of me tells me that the show can't do that. That's not how television works. That right. would be absurd if they did that. People would hate that. But the, the the part of my memory that remembered that scene, as soon as they moved on so quickly from it, I was like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's just stay here. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're not playing the game. Yeah, I recall that, too. The draft scene definitely jumps out in terms of the uh, one of the you know more memorable moments. They referenced it early in, like, the first or second episode. They showed a giraffe toy yeah. or a stuffed animal messed up and tucked in you know on the dirt uh and, and that yeah that made me worry they weren't gonna do it that that right. was their one homage but was, they did it was so. the giraffe scene in the game in salt lake city or boston I, know, I think it was in the same place i think it was right before they went to the hospital so it was because ellie okay. was yeah she was traumatized i didn't want to say originally in the first time we recorded this you know her first kill is the way i put it but it was killing david the cannibal David the Cannibal, Ellie's first kill. Well, her—I mean, her first uh, human kill. Oh, but she kills her buddy, her friend. Her, 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 her buddy's not a human, though. She's oh. a, a runner at that time. Yeah, but she sat there with her in the mall. I mean, I, I know that she turns into yeah, a zombie. Yeah, but, but, but after okay. she, yeah, she's. But her first yeah. actual homicide in the court of law, I guess you could put it. Fair enough. I guess in an Excel spreadsheet sort of way, she was in a different category than because the cordyceps had gotten to her brain. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, Once it happens, you're 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 open season. Yeah, yeah. I I found the time jumping a little bit 
I don't know if I'd call it time jumping, but just the ease of travel was a little bit uh, unwieldy for me, the, how how able they were to get across the country. Um, but at the same time, it's a show. I mean, what are they going to do? Show them getting like stuck outside Philadelphia for six, six episodes or getting stuck outside Western Philadelphia or then getting stuck somewhere, you know, because there'd be all sorts of ways you'd get caught up in things. They like all of a sudden they're in Kansas and it seemed, you know, but that's sort of normal in, in shows. I think that's not really a criticism. It's just something that threw me off a little bit um, because the game sort of the, 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 the game is kind of going for our realism somewhat. Right. Like the the the, well, the high concept. The, there. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, aside from the very ending where Joel was an unstoppable Rambo, which in the game, you don't think twice about it because you've already yeah. killed 800 people to get to that point. But when you see it in live action, it's like, what is so special about this one man that he can take out 80 people in a hospital by himself and love, not get hit? Love, James. What's special <laughs> about him is love. That's how you become a perfect murderer and who also can't be shot because the bad guys are scared of you because they know how much you love your adopted uh you know save your daughter who will save humanity with her with her blood with her brain <laughs> yeah now, th now that, that's I, also something that was really ridiculous and i don't blame the show for it because they got this from the game but yeah <sighs> Go ahead. Shouldn't they have tried doing some blood work or something on her or tried some other alternative before taking your one shot at a cure and just killing her to harvest something from her brain? They sure went pretty quick to the to the let's chop her head open. That was yeah, that feels like it, something you might kind of observe her for a little while, maybe like drop a little like eyedropper of, of mushroom yeah, sauce on her arm, see what happens. Exactly. You know, maybe take Try a pee, some pee, make her pee in a cup. <laughs> Make her, make her take a blood. <laughs> also, yeah, like they, they that went, they were like totally like just doing the surgery while the gunfighting was going on, you know? Yeah, they I didn't mean, notice that. Right. They must be American doctors. They're just used to hearing gunshots all the time, so they're able to. It doesn't mess up their concentration. Um, yeah. Now there, there is one thing I should also mention. With I'm not gonna, I don't want to give away anything for the next season too much. Okay. But it's important to note that in the game, the head surgeon that that Joel kills has a much, much, much darker complexion. Can, and then in the remake... He's black, they, you mean? I, I, I don't know if he's black, okay. but he has a very dark complexion. It's hard to tell because most of his face is covered by a mask, okay. so you don't get a good feel. There's, it's not a very well-lit area that he's in, so you can't... I can't say conclusively, but I know that when they had a chance to go back and remaster and, and re-release it, they intentionally made him a white man. All right. What? Why? What do you mean? Uh, for reasons that will become apparent in the next season. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Which the, tells me that that is the route they're they're taking. We're we're referring to lineage. I just we're, 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 is that what's happening somehow? Yes. W without saying too much. Yes. Okay. Well, that's only that's the only conclusion we could draw, other than like being because uh, I don't you know I don't care what the fucking color the guy's skin is. Um, but you're I should. The only, because that's the only possible reason that would be in any way, even remotely right. relevant. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, what, I, what I'm basically saying is, when the first yeah. game was originally made, they clearly did not plan on what the second game was going to do oh, because the two pieces did not fit together at all. So they had to rewrite parts of the first game during the remake okay. in order to make the two kind of fit together. Yeah. And it tells me that you know that that this was this was a haphazard story they came up with. Yeah, I, I did sure. not care for the story of the second game very much. Do you think, I, I mean, I'm hoping that they expand. So I saw a headline or something today uh, on Twitter somewhere that there are going to be multiple seasons already greenlit for the second game. Um, I personally couldn't give two flying shits if they stick to the game at all. I think they've done a decent job building the world. I like almost anything that's apocalyptic or dystopian. I'm a fan of that sort of genre stuff. Uh, sci-fi or this sort of high concept uh, apocalypse thing. I, 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 it's, it's nice to see mushrooms being the bad guys here instead of bacteria or viruses. I'd say phones should probably be a bad guy in a, in a future <laughs> in future uh, yeah. zombie apocalypses. It seems like that's what we're all living through right now. Um, but so like I for me, it, uh, it doesn't mean two wits, whatever, however close they are to the game or not. Um, oh, I'm hoping I think it's 
Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. That's fine. Go ahead. No, I was saying, I, I think it's better if they don't stick to the story of the second game. But I know that they will because Neil Druckmann's ego won't allow them. He's not going to say, oh, I wrote the second game wrong. It was bad. I need to fix it. He, he's not that kind of guy. He's going to go right. exactly the way the second game goes. But I hope that they do more with it to make it more palatable than it appeared in the game. Is there enough content in the second game to make several seasons um well yeah because in the second game you basically play as three main characters oh okay so you're seeing the story from three differing perspectives yeah yeah so they're they can do a lot with that i would be fine if they made up brand new shit like didn't this, this whole season started with the uh and i don't know what country they're in um malaysia or something it was like a scientist woman that they the oh, military yeah. guys yeah. brought in and then she tells a story about like that was another thing there she's like oh well you better start bombing the city i need to go be with my family so i can blow get blown up with my kids or well, i don't know what yeah, you know, her i, I love was. that that was not in the game and i thought that was fantastic yeah they, they like, really did a good job with that and there's a lot of things like the scientists in the beginning talking on like that you know the the what ifs if if fungi infections could uh, get get humans that wasn't in there either mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the opening where um, Sarah was traveling around and, and going to the neighbors and getting the watch fixed at the store, that wasn't in the game either. And I think that was the show was better for it, having done that. So there, there are a lot of additions. Uh, you know, the whole story about Bill and Frank is radically different from the game. In the game, you, you don't see, there's not like an entire section devoted to him. You never even see Frank alive in the game. He's just a corpse in a Hawaiian shirt hanging from a rafter with a note saying how much he, he hated Bill. So, so different. Was the corpse in, was Bill living in the house with the, his boyfriend's corpse still hanging around? No, no, no. The, the corpse was like somewhere in, in oh. the, the buildings and towns surrounding the house. And okay. the note gotcha. says something like, you know, you never come out this way, so you'll probably never find this. But if you do, F you or something yeah. like that. They had a big a fight. Yeah. It's over. We're, I'm breaking up with you. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. Sulfur's in the air. What's oh. that mean? Oh, we got the, the burning guys. Got to go. Let's go fuck these guys up. All Put right. on your guns, James. We're going to kill some people. Where are um, you? Come show over yourselves. Here. Show yourselves. Uh-oh. We're in now a weird... Now they're trying... They'll probably just walk through the water to get to us and kill themselves. Yeah. This is a beautiful game, by the way, everybody. I just oh, yeah. can't get over how gorgeous this game is. Um, yeah, they're not coming out. Okay, a guy just got killed over there. So what... what just to explain to people, I think what's happening is that we're in this biome spot. We're in this little, like, black forest biome that is next to this. So we're getting raided, but I have workbenches around that prevent them from spawning close by. Although I don't know if that affects the raid. So the, some dudes are, would normally be showing up here to fight us, but they're, uh, they seem to be encumbered by the water because <laughs> this is not exciting yeah. at all. This yeah, is this not... is pretty much the, oh, there's, there the they worst are. place for them to Here they come. come after us. But they they can't get to yeah. us, though. They're just, oh, oh, yeah. uh, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Yeah, no, I'm already no. on it. They're like little Oompa Loompas having a, having a go. No, not not them. To the left. You're left. The ones I'm shooting at? No, not them. Look in the trees. Oh, a, a, a race. Okay, fuck. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on him. You work on the circling. Okay, here's a guy, too. All right, see, this, this did get scary. That wraith is like purple. I hope it's not a level a level up. Yeah, sorry, we're going to interrupt our podcast for some violence. This is a violence break, brought to you by Suck Professor. Violence. What would Joel do? What would Joel do? James is wearing two "What would Joel do?" bracelets on his ankles. They call them anklets if you put them down there. So, I shot the guy in the face. I don't have any fire arrows. It's purple though. I just hope that's discoloration. Okay, now it's coming blue gonna let this guy get closer so i really want to get the, the hoodie give me your hoodie oh fuck missed him give me your hoodie, bitch Ooh, my first time using my new shield hit me Locked. come on hoodie nope nope just the chain all right that was fun <laughs> where were we next season i like what i'm saying is like i i i like the uh 
I like the uh, there was someone just jumping. Oh, that's one of those oozers. I like the world that they've built. I, I always want to stay in, in the like and see different stories, different experiences. Not that I want the next um, show to necessarily move over to the scientist woman, but like in every single location, there's in crazy intense drama happening. Um, so it's just a rich territory to mine. That's why for me, I'm very open to like allowing uh, new environments. Get him, James. <laughs> James and I go to the mall. Uh, we're banned from all the malls in LA because we, we used to <laughs> podcast at the mall. So we're not allowed there anymore. That's why we're in Valheim. All right, let's get back to the podcasting. We don't want to bore our listeners. Um, I had a couple of thoughts. Oh, the one thing I thought they did well was not overuse the bad, the, the, uh, the mushroom monsters. Like I kind of expected it to be like the video game, uh, at least going in where you're going to see them all the time. Cause you kill a bunch of them, right? And in the game, you're always fighting through one hallway to the next and one, one, uh, sewer system. And yeah, this was, I thought they used a lot of restraint and I thought that did that actually, and they looked great when they well, did it. The, the most implausible I, scenario was the one where the bloater crawls up out of the house and, um, oh, yeah, that, that and there's no resolution whatsoever yeah. to it. No one ever takes it out. And, yeah. But it does show the, the intimidating danger factor of the bloater. Yeah, the yeah. thing that I thought was kind of odd is the, the, the biggest change that they made from the game to the TV show is they introduced the, the fungal network. So if something uh, like a clicker was attached to the fungal network and is killed, it sends a signal through that network and informs hundreds of thousands of other clickers, which is how Tess ends up being killed. Because in the in the game, Tess is killed by Fedra troops. She's not killed by clickers, a French kiss from a clicker. That that was which one's a Tess? modification. Who's Tess? Uh, Fringe. Fringe. Oh, oh Anna yeah, Tor the lady from Fringe. Yeah, the actor. Yeah. Did, yeah. you, did you like Fringe? Did you watch all of Fringe? I love Fringe until they did the parallel universe where everyone played two different characters, and then I thought it sucked from that point forward. Well, there's a Star Trek Voyager episode where they do par No, I'm just joking. Every every sci-fi uh, show eventually does a mirror universe, like Stargate SG-1 yeah, has a bunch of that. That, that was yeah. the shark that they jumped. I'm, I'm enjoying Picard Season 2, and it's sort of in that way. I, re I really want to talk about Picard. I wish you were a Star Trek guy, James. I'm going to have to mm -hmm. talk about it myself. I'm really uh, finally getting uh, season one was a bit of a romp and I'm really struggling with discovery, but uh, nevertheless. Um, so yeah, Tess gets killed. Uh, is the, did you, sorry, did you just say this? That is that the way it was in the game? Is that how she dies in the game? No, no, completely. She's, she's gunned down by Fedra troops and she's buying Joel and Ellie time to escape and dies in a hail of gunfire. Okay. Hail of As gunfire opposed... sounds like gunfire from the sky, like hail. So, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be taken that way, Stupid but comment. yeah, it's okay. But the the fact that they took the effort to introduce this network thing made me feel as though it was going to be a lot of heavy stealthing and sneaking around clickers because you right. can't just stealth kill one if it's touching one of those uh, network cords. It's going to alert everyone else, and instead they just seem to completely drop the idea altogether. Yeah, and all those scenes in the game of Ellie and Joel going through clicker nests and taking out bloaters and having these big epic battle scenes there's just none of that yeah the uh mycelium network with the little uh, crawly yeah. uh, crawly strands like that that's how they notify him when he kills him in the um museum or something i don't know what the hell they're in but the guy touches like moss and suddenly that activate activates the mushroom fungus web to, yeah, uh, but there's alert their presence. Yeah, there's so many game moments where like Ellie and Joel go up against a bloater. Like the first time you run into Bill in the game, Bill's alive, and you go on missions with him. You have you see you he you helps pick, you, you fight pick, pick bloaters. <laughs> uh, not quite, no, but uh, but yeah, you're in like a uh, school gymnasium, and you're you're trying to bring down this bloater using Molotovs. Like, not a single Molotov cocktail, not a single brick is thrown, and that's a huge thing that they throw bricks and uh, bottles and things to distract clickers and make them go off in different directions. Not a single one of those. No, no chihuahuas uh, with a bomb strapped to them. Nothing like that. No uh, nail bombs were a big thing in the game. You think that they could maybe, like Joel, having survived as long as he has, you think he'd be able to make something like an improvised explosive, but no, nothing like that. Right. No wrapping so, his arm with a bandage to heal a bullet wound. To heal his leg, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah exactly. To pop his kneecap back on. <laughs> yeah, but there's like, I, I had such high hopes that there were going to be like adrenaline fueled moments where you think Joel, I mean, if you, if you don't know any better, I haven't played the game, you think Joel could possibly die, but 
that that like tense moments where they have to band together to take out impossible foes. Right. Right. And, and that should not be something that is relegated just to the world of gaming. That could have made for an incredibly potent scene. But they just didn't do it. And instead, all we get is this fabricated Fedra character who's not really Fedra. She's a rebel that, that pushed Fedra out of uh, Kansas City. Yeah. And you see her get killed. She, they introduce her randomly. She gets killed randomly. And at the end of it, it's like, well, what was the point of her? Yeah, the lady that's like the mom type lady. Yeah, of, yeah, it's just... Hair. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, that, that was not... In the, I mean, you do sneak around and you kill bandits and things like that but i don't recall her being in the game although i could be wrong i could be remembering incorrectly but i it might have been seem in, to add much yeah and they didn't find any audio logs they didn't like click on no. a glowing thing and been like listen to somebody go like my mother and i are trapped in the dungeon right now fortunately the code to the safe is fourteen fourteen. oh no yeah. there's knocking at the walls Ouch. Yeah, and it sounds silly Ouch, but that was one heart. of my yeah, that was one of my favorite parts of the game. You spend so much time in what feels like a massive open world, going through neighborhoods, into these houses that have been reclaimed by nature, where the roof has fallen in and vines are crawling across bedrooms, opening drawers to find uh, equipment to, so you can craft items, finding notes and, and diary entries from the people that were behind, or just finding, like dead people in bed together with a, with a, uh, you know a gun in their hands to show that they just took the easy way yeah. out. Jay, Jay Leno is, is, viewers, yeah, I know. Yeah. So there's a there's so much story and such flavor and as you go through all that. Oh. Uh, hold on. Audio's audio cut out. Oh, wait, wait, stop. Your audio just went real weird. Just uh, back up a sentence. You know, I think you said. Uh -oh. Wow. Hold on. Okay, okay, you're back now. Yeah, we got a real weird tinny kind of inter interference there. Go ahead. Start back up. Uh, you know is something I think I heard you say. Oh, yeah, I think our net's going down. What? Get, uh, if you look at the top left of your screen, do you see something flashing? Oh, oh I have uh, Valheim up. Um, the internet. Oh, yeah, Valheim, yeah. Yeah, internet's failing. We've been having um, issues with our internet. I think it's working. No, I'm getting a connection error flashing on the top left of my screen. In Valheim? Yeah, I'm not getting that at all. Well, I'm the I'm the server, I guess. But I think we're still recording you through Discord, so you can keep talking. We're sitting here looking. I'm looking at our characters right now. Okay, it just stopped. I think we're I mean, past it. Yeah. Yeah. Not very reliable internet here in uh, the uh, entertainment capital of the world. Do you think they'd get that shit figured out a bit? Any, the place where people upload more than anything else? Los Angeles, California, USA. Okay, James, go ahead. As you, if you can remember what we were you were saying. Oh no, I, I, I finished. I'm I'm done. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have much more else to say. I was uh, overall pleased with the uh, experience. I, I was a little bit. I really liked Bella Ramsey in uh, Game of Thrones, and I thought the casting was so good uh, when I first heard that because I just thought that she did a great job in that show. Um, my my. Uh, my metrics don't, I don't really care if she looks a lot like the girl or whatever, you know, that stuff doesn't really matter much to me. Um, although I understand why it's important to people who are like big fans of the game. Anyway, I was a little disappointed kind of out the gate with not, not necessarily with her acting. I just feel like the writing for her character, especially when they're trying to be funny, like the whole, like, Oh, she's got all this sassy personality. Like that's really tough to pull off. That's almost like a, it, it felt very on the page for me. I don't know if that's a, understandable criticism but i just could see the writer's brain not it didn't feel like an organic person being a, a, a goofy smart ass because i feel like that's sort of thing you have to let a, a, a genuinely kind of charismatic person improvise in, a, in an acting kind of role um or the writing has to be absolutely perfect and it automatically because it's coming from a video game it's going to be a little bit harder to lift but it's a major part of her personality is like the puns and the joking around and so uh, they they had to include it. Um, I just felt that there were times, and then over the season though, her she she uh, I came to appreciate the acting a lot better. I think with more dramatic scenes and stuff as her character evolved. Um, but I still found the the puns and the joking around to be just a little bit cringy, I guess. Um, even though it's realistic, I mean, people are still going to need outlets for you know entertainment. They don't they don't all have uh, you know 
shopping like we have these days to feel better. Um, so, and also they were like incredibly, I thought irresponsible with all the banter. Like they were, they were always being loud or wasting batteries and their flashlights or using stuff. <laughs> I always felt like it was like, aren't you guys like terrified? You're right. Standing outside a building. You don't, and they're just joking. You're just having loud conversations, wandering through a military encampment or something like, I don't know. It just felt like, um, at least in my sense, I'd be like, shh, quiet. We'll joke around somewhere else where we know we're like, shh, we're not, it's not safe to be bantery right now, but a At movie the where they don't, a show where they don't talk to each other would be kind of boring. Yeah, remember the very beginning when they camp out for the first time? Uh, he chastises her about there being a fire and they're talking too loud and is like, and telling her that she's going to be safe, but he does. He can't really promise that. They yeah. they go from that to, like you said, talking so loud that they end up getting a, a rifle stock to the back of his head at the very last episode just out of nowhere yeah oh yeah right yeah they, and then yeah they weren't being really careful at that point while they were in the yeah, military encampment in a city that they weren't they were afraid of yeah they're literally walking through a public area a military encampment where they know that they're supposed to be fireflies and just talking up a storm and joking about puns yeah it's like they right. got progressively stupider over time yeah and you're gonna have limited um, paper like we, ha we we we're all used to information being beamed into our brains at every every minute of the day uh but in a world where uh there's no printing anymore or where like like someone might activate a printing press but it's an old-timey kind of thing or maybe they have enough electricity to run like a computer and some paper perhaps for a little while but that's not going to last for decades and decades so all the all the sort of uh, supply supply chain infrastructure of modern society is what allows us to have so much information at all times so in in an apocalyptic setting uh we go back to the you know 1300s where anybody where the you know literacy was at a, not to say that everybody then would not have been able to read but like this the availability of new information as paper degrades over time and there's maybe i mean there'd still be a lot of books there's still be a lot of stuff um but i'm not sure what point i'm getting at there's something oh i was thinking of like there's a it's not the point but there was a in the Dark Tower series with uh, Stephen King wrote, um, there's a scene in the plane. It's near the beginning, and it's a really cool world-building moment where, like, sorry, James, you might know it better than I did. And by the way, what a great movie. Matthew McConaughey's finest work I, oh, I've, God, I've, no. I've ever seen. But um, I think it's Jake. I'm, I'm I read it when I was a teenager, and I, you know, I don't remember yeah. what I did this morning. So, But there's a scene where they're on an airplane, but I think he inhabits, you know, he wakes up, and he's, like, got someone else's perspective. But he sees... Because the he's from like the dystopian time, and now he's on an airplane in a modern world, and he's and he looks to his left or something and sees the person next to him has a sheet of paper, and is writing on it and like crumples it up or something, and it's like a big deal to waste paper. He's like, oh my god, you know, like something. I just recall that from the Dark Tower books. Um, so like in in other words, it, whoever controls information will have so much more power in those settings. Uh, I'm just ra rambling because something you said made me think of that. Um, Go ahead, you talk now. I ran out. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm thinking about the Dark Tower now. It's fitting that you and the Tower should fall together. <laughs> yeah. he was, yeah, yeah, you were talking about the Land of Gilead. Yeah, something like Ro that. Yeah. Roland, was it Roland yeah. Delgado, I think it was? I don't know, I just remember crabs eating his toes while he was sleeping on the beach. Uh, well, he ate his fingers. <laughs> Oh, I thought they bit his, is, his through his toe, which, through his through his boot. No, he he lost a few fingers. I remember being horrified by mm -hmm. that because he's a gunslinger. He needs his fingers. That's a good point. Takes a lot of uh, practice to shoot guns with your feet, but people do it. Yeah. You ever see those drummers? They have no arms. Those guys are amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. But I had some they point get really related. bad headaches though. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, the, the, the civilization. One final thing, the. You said her name, the lady that he kills in the garage when she's like, and he shoots her, you know, yeah, with Marlene, his, Marlene, they showed she was friends with Ellie's mom and she kills Ellie's mom. Right. That's the same character. Yeah, that, that, that's why. I, that's why I said she was like Ellie's quote unquote mother, her yeah. adoptive mother. Very much like in a very real way, mother, you know, like because that, that's why Ellie asks. Yeah. Joel is Marlene. OK, did the Raiders get Marlene? He doesn't answer. And she just kind of turns yeah. around and, and 
but recedes into why her was mind. she in Salt Lake? Did she? Did they explain that? Didn't she say something like, "We we've been chasing you guys across the country"? Is that what she? Does she explain why she was no, also she was, in Salt Lake City? Like, what? How did that happen? What was the serendipity she, that led to no, that? She, she was she was going there the whole time. She just needed someone to transport the child, and she knew that taking the kid with her group wouldn't be that safe. So she needed somebody else to ensure Ellie's safety while they both made their way out there. I see. So they were, it was sort of part of a, a scheme of sorts that if she's with Joel, yeah. she's probably safe, but they're traveling. And so we're also, because I found that pretty yeah. coincidental that they're like, oh and yeah, she, I'm also she, in Salt Lake City. No, she even said like, I, I left with like five able-bodied yeah. men and I almost died anyway. Right. Yeah. I think if I watched it again, I would pick, pick that up a little closer because I've, I don't, I don't follow the dialogue all that well. <laughs> What's this thing? Uh, all right. Well, anyway, are you excited about the next uh, upcoming series? Is you feel like it's in good hands uh, based on Craig Mazin and uh, Neil Druckmann's uh, effort here? They they didn't miss as badly. I mean, if this was not a whiff, they, I think I think this is a pretty successful. Well, uh, no, I, uh, yeah, I wanted to watch the first season because the first season was the show run. I mean, the the game producer, that that the lead developer was a completely different guy. Neil Druckmann worked on the first game, but he wasn't the lead on the first game. And he was in the second game, and I just do not like anything the second game represents, so I don't know if I can bring myself to watch season two. I started this with season one in mind, and with season one done, I think I might be done. But we'll see. Yeah, I think you'll watch the first episode at least, right? I mean, come on. I'm not going to... Not gonna boycott it right now. Wait till you see the trailers uh, at least. Maybe. All right. Well, okay. We could uh, say about any any games this year you're looking forward to. And by the way, people in the comments, let, let us know what games and TV shows. I, I I'd like to come back and talk about Andor, James. I think that that's like oh, my yeah. favorite series of the last like five years at least. I, I was really yeah, that was a good it. one. Yeah. What are you looking forward to this year? Shows or games? Oh, uh, there is. I'm looking forward to further updates to Sons of the Forest. They're, they're really fleshing it out, making it a whole game. So that's going to be fun when they're done with that. Uh, Baldur's Gate oh. 3, I believe it is, should be out of early access and fully playable. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, when is, when Star, is, Star, uh, is it Starfield? Is Starfield? that what it's called? Yeah, that's like Fallout. It's a yeah, yeah, Fallout in Space, that's gonna be a big one. if not better. Um, yeah, that's great. When does the uh, Elden... Elder Scrolls Six is that still a long way away? Oh, uh, the, I've heard announcements about it. I don't know the timetable and when it's going to come out, though. Yeah. But that's going to be a major one if it, because the last one came out uh, November eleventh. Was it two thousand or two thousand one or twenty twenty ten? Nineteen seventy two. It was seventy two. I think it was twenty. It, it was the see. sequel to Frogger. Um, I, all, was, all I remember was eleven eleven. Yeah, so that's Skyrim, though, right? Isn't, I mean, Skyrim's the last Elder, elder Scrolls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, five. Yeah, so. oh, no, no, of course. I. What's wrong with me? November 11th, 2011. It was 11 11 11. You fucking idiot. Yeah, I should remember that one. Okay. All right. Um. Great, James. Uh, we did it. I think we're good. I think we could say goodbye. I think I might do a recording here. Um. I did put a, a thing on my uh, Winners and Losers YouTube channel. There's shit in the description. For that, I'm uh, very imperfectly starting trying to trying to piece all my my various uh, online efforts together and get in touch with some old comedian friends and stuff and maybe start having guests on and do some things like that and have a little fun. It's not been very fun lately. It's, so how do you expect to build an audience if you're not uh, not having fun, right? Look at this guy, James. Are you uncomfortable with how close I'm standing? I just now noticed it. Huh? <laughs> I was zoomed out looking at the sunset. I'm yeah, gonna, that's I'm a blow little a kiss. uncomfortable. Oh, bad, bad shot here. Let me let me blow you a kiss. The most gentle Don't. kind of blowing. Only I had some of those barf berries. <laughs> <laughs> I might. Oh, to no. be without them. I do not. I only have soup. And an, let me throw an ooze bomb. Let's just end with this. We'll just say goodbye. But I do have an ooze bomb, which are, boy, this shield is just like fucking. Could it be thirty percent smaller. Um, I want to drop an ooze bomb on a bad guy. So uh, this is not uh, this is a terrible impulsive decision I'm making here. Should probably put on clothes. You know what? That's a bad idea. Maybe we'll do it another time. Since I'm okay. All right, I'll just throw the fucking news bomb. Here we go, James. 
Well, the tree is too hard. Okay, that's appropriate. All right, everybody, check it out. Check the description. James, you've been swell. I'll let you. I'll let you get to your whatever you need to do to your uh, all right. Turn to your your uh, your travails in your own world. And uh, I'm going to do some fishing and maybe keep recording a little bit for another thing. So, Sounds bye. good. See you later, everybody. Say hi to the cat. Say hi to Eva the cat behind me. Check her out. Check her out. Got to go get her fucking nails cut off because I have a, now I have a ninja baby with the razors on her feet. I never wanted any children. And having a cat uh, makes me uh, 100% even more certain than I was before. <laughs> And this one, you, I, she can, I can let her die from neglect and I won't get arrested. Well, I mean, I probably would, but like, you let a human baby die of neglect, that's a much worse deal. Okay? That's all I'm saying. All right? Good stuff. That's great. Real appropriate. Real, oh, God, why is it getting so foggy?